Hello, hello. Welcome to Physiology Chapter 1. Uh, we're going to go over the intro, homeostasis, and feedback loops. So, right, we had to first define what physiology is, right, before you even start anything. So, physiology, physiology is, it's basically why and how do the, the basically organs and organ systems work. Organs and organ systems work. Um, so in anatomy, you probably learned, well, you should have learned, uh, you know, what the organ is um, and the very, very basics of it. So like, hey, the liver, you know, filters out our blood, right? It takes, you know, cleans the, you know, takes away all the toxins. That's the very basics of it. Physiology is why does it do it? How does it do it? Right? It's very, very in, uh, it's quite way more in depth than anatomy. So um, homeostasis is the first thing we're going to talk about here, right? So homeostasis, homeostasis, now that the textbook definition is regulation of internal environment. Regulation of internal environment. What does this mean? Right, we, we, had, to, we had to define everything in this channel. So homeostasis, um, so like internal, like a regulation of internal environment. So think of, we're gonna talk about our body, right? Our body is their internal environment. There's so many things going on at once, right? So many processes, right? We're using ATP, our body temperature is going all the place, our blood pressure is going crazy, right? Uh, not crazy, but you know what I mean. You know, there's always changes happening. So how do we regulate this? How do we stay at someone equilibrium, right? So the, the key word is equilibrium. We have to be out of balance. Now, I have something to tell you, some bad news. This is, you probably learned this is, uh, you probably learned this in, uh, you know, your basic biology class or you in physiology may have learned this. You probably heard your professor say, our body tries to reach, you know, our, our body is going to equilibrium. That's what homeostasis is. is we're trying to reach equilibrium. Well, the news is, is that that's impossible. Our body is never at equilibrium. It is not possible, right? Our, bo our body is always uh, trying to regulate. So 24-7 regulation. It's always happening. It's going back and forth. It's like a ping pong, right? Uh, going you know left to right, up and down, whatever. It's trying to it's trying to maintain homeostasis or trying to maintain equilibrium, but it's not possible. There's so many things happening at once that we can never actually fully maintain equilibrium. So how um you uh how do we do this? How do we maintain or try to maintain equilibrium? Try to get as close to it as possible. We can never reach it fully. But how do you get it close as possible? We do that by feedback, feedback loops. Feedback loops. There are two types of feedback loops we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over slowly because uh, it's this kind of complicated. Um, so we have positive feedback loops. Feedback loops. And negative feedback loops. And negative feedback loops. Feedback. What's the difference? So, in positive feedback loops, I'm going to give an example of both. Actually, um, I'm going to write that or do a whole chart and whatnot. But positive feedback loops is when we have a response that reinforces the stimulus. What does this mean? It's probably it doesn't sound like anything right now, right? But I'll I'll make it make more sense. There's the stimulus. And the best way I teach is by through examples. You're not gonna understand if I just give you a definition. That's boring. So I'm gonna give you examples, something you might see on a test or something. Negative feedback. So negative is when the response response that was an ugly R response shuts off the stimulus. Ta-da. Okay. Positive feedback loop. Let's go over an example to make this more, you know, make it actually make sense. So say you have your girlfriend or wife or some 
significant other or girlfriend, or I don't, I, whatever. Right? Some girl was pregnant, okay? Uh, so she, she's, you know, for quite a long, right? So she has a, um, the baby, whatever, is stretching the cervix. So cervical stretch from the baby. We're going to call this the stimulus. So this is the stimulus. Dun -dun. Something's happening. That's our stimulus. This now causes something called oxytocin to produce, be produced. Oxytocin uh, production. Now, this is a hormone. We'll go over this, you know, in a little bit um, whenever we do get to endocrine system. But oxytocin causes uterine contractions, right? We have to, we have to push this baby out of there some, at some point. So this is what oxytocin does. It helps the mother push the baby out. So oxytocin production. And as I just said, this causes uterine contractions, more forceful contractions, more rapid. Uh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. And what does this do? This causes the baby, baby to be pushed against cervix. Cervix. Whoops. I was looking at asterisk. Um, cervix. Okay. Ta da. And this is the response we get. Okay. This is our response. Now, when the babe pushes against the cervix, that actually causes cervical stretch, right? More stretch. So this is reinforcing it. When you get more stretch, you got more oxytocin producing, uh, being produced, more uterine contractions, baby push, pushed out even more, you get cervical stretch. It's just an ongoing loop, right? Loop. And it stops by some kind of external factor, aka baby is delivered. Once the baby's out of there, I mean, it was, it, it get, there's still contractions out a little after, but we're, oxytocin, right, doesn't st stop getting produced, right? Because we got we less cervical stretch. So that's the gist of feedback, uh, positive feedback loops. I'm going to give a more in-depth example in the advanced video. So this is like the beginner video. That's what I'm planning to do. This is like the first video I'm doing. So, you know, give me a break. Um, so let's go over negative feedback. Negative feedback, arguably the most common one. They're both important. Positive just doesn't it doesn't mean it's good, and negative means bad. No, no, no. Positive means reinforce. Negative means inhibit. Essentially. So let's do negative. So let's say, uh, I should say negative feedback. Negative feedback. Negative feedback. Okay. So let's use a non-human body. Example. <laughs> so say if you got a fish tank, right, right at an aquarium, there's a fish tank there filled with water. So say the water temperature, there's a fish in there, we're going to call him Nemo, I guess, or Dory, whatever, whatever movie you like better. <laughs> water temperature, say in the, in the tank, drops, drops to a certain temperature, drops, uh, drops, certain temp. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> We're going to call this the stimulus. Different color. This is the stimulus right here. Ta da. Stimulus. Now, something's going to happen. The fish is not going to, you know, freeze air. It's going to, um, so we, uh, we got something, you know, to regulate this. So we have something called a thermo, you know, a thermometer or something like that. A thermometer. Not spell. Thermometer senses ten temperature drop. So what? How does this re, uh, relate to the human body? So in our in our uh, in our body, we have something called thermoreceptors that regulate temperature. We're gonna go over this, you know, later on. But uh, how do how do we know if we're hot? How do we know if we're cold? Well, I know I'm hot. <laughs> I'm still gonna get demonetized. Um, <laughs> So, we have thermal receptors, and this is how we detect 
uh, how, what our body temperature is. So we have a thermometer and this is our sensor. I regret making that joke now. <laughs> I'm not going to re-record this. Okay. So now we got the signal goes to the control box. Control box. Okay. From the thermometer, has to go to the control box to actually do something. The thermometer is not going to do anything. It's just a thermometer. So this is called the input signal. Input signal. There we go. Okay. Now we are at the control box now, right? The mothership <laughs> control box okay. is programmed, programmed to turn on heater, to turn on heater at 29 degrees Celsius. I'm just making a random temperature. Okay. And this is called the integration center. Why am I, why, why am I doing this? Why am I naming these things? Okay. In our body, the integration center is our hypothalamus. And thalamus, but hypothalamus. This is like our little hypothalamus here. It's our hypothalamus is basically the control box of our body. Okay. Now, from the hypothalamus or integration center, control box, whatever, the signal uh, goes through a wire, goes through a wire to a heater. It's called our output signal. Output signal. Yay. Okay. Output signal. Now, the heater turns on. Heater turns on. Yay. <laughs> um, I, I, I always have a heater on in my car because I'm always like cold. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Just like the heater on. Okay, that's why I put the smiley face. <laughs> okay, seven. Finale, right? Water temperature increases or raises. Increases. Okay, this is our response. We finally got there. This is our response. Yay! So we got it. Water temperature is now warmer. How does the negative feedback come into play? Well, if the water temperature is hot, this means it's not cold. So if it's not cold, then the thermometer does not detect the temperature drop because it's hot, it's not cold, right? It does not signal to the control box. It does not go to the integration center. Why would we need to turn on the heater if it's already hot, right? It's, say we, we, the water temperature is now, for example, I don't know, 32 degrees Celsius, for example, right? It's no longer 29 degrees, so the heater is not going to turn on. It has to be 29 degrees or lower, for example. It's 32 degrees. So it's basically inhibiting the stimulus. This is how negative feedback comes into play. We're inhibiting the stimulus, and we're no longer getting a response. We only get the response once. This is how negative feedback you know, comes into play in our body. Now, if you're clever enough, you would realize... Um, I, I kind of made that sound mean. You're all clever. <laughs> but uh, so I was mentioning, you know, for example, the thermometer, it was like our thermoreceptors. The wires or signals are like our neurons in our body. Same thing. I just, I just got to change up this example to make it look like it's more real life. I mean, our humans real life. What am I saying? Okay. <laughs> I'm going off topic. But our control box, hypothalamus. Okay. So... I somehow try to relate it to human life, somehow, try to. Hopefully I was successful. But thank you for listening. This will conclude our beginner slash introduction version of chapter one for intro homeostasis and feedback loops. I plan to make an advanced one with more challenging examples, something you would see on an exam, but this is the very basic stuff. Uh, so whenever I plan to do that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll see. All right, all right, cheers.